It's a snow day, all the kids are home sick from school and they're not going anywhere. So we thought it'd be a good time to get this finished up. We're gonna show you how to layer paint, add on some chippy milk paint and give this an authentic old look. And I'll also show you how I put those feet on. So I filmed that out of sequence. We built this on Waste Not Wednesday last week and I'll make sure that the link for the video on the build is in the description and right here up above. But I just cut these blocks out of a four by four on my table saw to match the size of this piece here. And I'm just screwing them down in so that they're nice and fast. And then I'll take some Bondo and fix that seam there. Got some 3 8 wood plugs here. That's gonna fill most of the hole because I drilled them at an angle. I'm still gonna have to put a little bit of putty in there, but that's okay. All right, I got a little bit of uh, Bondo mixed up on the scrap wood. And I'm just using a piece of scrap to apply it and then I'll take it and sand it. So are we doing this how we usually do it? This is just the undercoat that's gonna kind of peek through so we kind of mostly just want to hit the edges, right? We don't anywhere, need to do full coverage. Anywhere you feel like. Um, we're gonna start with mint chip, apothecary, salty kiss, just kind of layer it on there however. It's like a range of uh, light bluish greens and a pretty nice vintage green color in salty kiss. Okay, so you're just, you're just going. Yeah, I'm just going. This part is the fun part. Oh, do you have some mint chip over there yet? No, I don't. You can go ahead and add that in there. So the reason we're putting colors on kind of random like this is because we're going to go over the top of it with a solid color. We're using flower sack and sweet pickens milk paint. And these will show up through when we wet distress or when the milk paint crackles and chips like it likes to naturally do in places. We always like to tell people it looks like a hot mess before it gets better. And that is very true with this finish. I'm adding in Queen Bee because that would look like a good idea. Our mishmash of paint here of all the different colors is dry and I'm just going to be spraying on some Zinger shellac. We're going to just create a resist. It's cold, it's snowing outside and we're hoping we get some good crackle when we put the mift paint over this. I'm not going for full coverage. I'm just going to go ahead and spray it in a few spots and that way where we get the resist and crackle it'll look like it's real natural and just kind of happened randomly. So I've mixed up one part Sweet Pickens milk paint in flower sack with one part warm water and I'm using my immersion blender to mix it all up and then I'll let it sit for about 10 minutes to thicken up. So milk paint is much thinner than the DIY paint. So the first coat is gonna be kind of streaky, but the second coat will get full coverage. And just be careful that you don't get drips. It should be the consistency of a melted milkshake. This part here is the tricky part, getting coverage down underneath <laughs> here. Might need a smaller brush. I know what you're thinking. It still looks like a mess. <laughs> well, I mean, it's gonna be messy. The thing about milk paint is this is made the way paint was made for centuries. This thin kind of drippy paint and the clay paint is similar to some of the paints they used back in the day too. So the textures and the looks that you can create with these are more authentic to the age of a piece as opposed to like a traditional acrylic or latex. I saw it in a lot of the finishes when we were over in France. Sometimes it was thick, sometimes it was runny and drippy. At this point, you can leave it alone. It's just gonna dry naturally and you'll get some crackle. We always like to see if we can force it a little bit. I've just got a regular hair dryer. You could use a heat gun. And what this is gonna do is two things. It's gonna dry it out quick and we might get some extra chipping. 
So we've got one coat coverage here, and I'm just coming back with a second coat. Second coat is gonna be good enough for us because we're gonna give it a heavy distress. We're gonna hopefully coax out some chipping, maybe with wet distress. We already got a little bit chipping there. And we'll just see how it goes. This is what two coats of milk paint look like over the top. So we got such good crackle that we are just going to give it a little bit of a wet distress and see what happens, see if some of this will chip off. We're not going to do a touch up coat. We're gonna leave it and just distress it and see what happens. I've not done it before, but I'm gonna try a sponge to wet distress, see how it happens. Here's the thing with milk paint. When you activate it with water, you take a risk that it could all chip off. So you've been warned. And you're using a lot of water. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get that paint off. Jimmy's using the wet sponge on it. And as it dries out, we're getting this chipping here. So I'm just coming over with some 220 grit sandpaper and we're knocking off any of the loose paint. We'll still get some of the chipping show through and the paint and the color variations will start to come out too. So you can see now that I've knocked the loose paint off, we're getting all kinds of different variations in tone and color and we still have some crackly effect. Part of why we're getting all of this crackle is because the shellac was still tacky when we went back on with the milk paint. It hadn't cured yet. This is why we went ahead and painted while the shellac was still tacky, not quite dry, because when it, the shellac dries with that milk paint on top of it, that's how come you're getting all this crackle. If you waited for that shellac to dry completely, you wouldn't get nearly the crackle effect. So another option, instead of shellac, you can also use a spray can of lacquer, or you could also use like a spray paint underneath the milk paint just needs to be tacky, not quite all the way dry. Milk paint is completely unpredictable. Here, it chipped down just to that base layer. Over here, you can see that it chipped all the way down to the stained part. So some people say, well, I don't want it to go down to this layer, but I do want it to go down to that layer. When you're dealing with milk paint, you're really just, it is what it is. So you don't get to pick what layer it goes down to. You don't get to pick where the chip stops. So just know that ahead of time. This is super chippy. If we were to put a liquid top coat on here, I feel like it would probably never <laughs> stop chipping. So in that case, clear wax is a good option. We'll see. We still might get some chips and flakes still coming off. It sometimes takes a couple days for the reaction to stop and for it to settle down and be like, okay, this is what sticks and this is what doesn't. So if you come back, just keep picking those off a little bit here and there and it'll be all right. Well, it's only because we wet distressed it. Like that's what really causes the crazy chipping. But no risk, no reward. I like the way it turned out. I think it's looking awesome. And if more chips off, it'll be okay. Yeah.
Our six snow day project is complete. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us with our froggy voices. I love the way it turned out. Just a few steps on this. It's actually a pretty messy paint job, but it all comes together at the end when you do the distressing and the crackle starts to come through. If you make it too perfect or too precious, it doesn't look authentic. If you want to achieve a similar look, make sure you're hitting up jamierayvintage.com for all your paint and products and stick around so you can see all the yummy close-ups of the chippy goodness. Be sure to give us a thumbs up if you like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Lift me up higher above the clouds, won't you love? When the scenery